Hello, so today I'm going to share a few things from the past two weeks. So the last two weeks I've had sick children. There's always been somebody sick every day. So the last week of school, there was always somebody home each day. So I didn't do the things that I usually do at school or at preschool or the little haven. So it's been a nice quiet two weeks. Um, so the children were kind of sick a little bit and then um, the other ones got better and Esther just had high fevers for quite a few days so in the end I rang up a nurse at the medical centre and asked if she needed to see a doctor or not because I wasn't really sure. I wasn't too worried because often when you have the flu you get fevers but it kind of just seemed to keep going on and they were quite high so I um, talked to a nurse and when I told her that it was her fifth day of high fevers she said to get her up to ED. So I took her up there and after waiting nearly <laughs> all day up there, found out she has pneumonia. And so we got some antibiotics for that um, and she's been slowly getting over that. But it's just taken a lot out of her and she still gets very tired. So I have a few thoughts of just things that I've been thinking about this week, kind of connected to Esther being sick and then on Friday she started to look a bit better again, started to have a little bit more energy and then Hannah got sick so today I'm home with Hannah. Um, so on so on Monday she went to up to the hospital and we found out she had pneumonia so on Tuesday we had to go get a script for antibiotics and because it was the beginning of the holidays and because we were kind of stuck home um, I we dropped into the op shop and just to look for a few games so we could have something new to do at home. So we found Operation, which is what I used to play when I was little, and we found Taboo. So we've been playing those a little bit at home. And I picked up a few books as well. And this book I kind of got for me because I find Fables fascinating. This is Aesop's Fables, which I don't know anything about him, but I do find Fables interesting. Um, and just a few days later I read a fable in Streams in the Desert, which I'm going to quickly read to you because it is quite a neat one. And it's based on the verse, They, they shall mount up with wings as eagles in Azar. And it says, There is a fable about the way the birds got their wings at the beginning. They were first made without wings, in the fable. Then God made the wings and put them down before the wingless birds and said to them, Come, take up these burdens and bear them. The birds had lovely plumage and sweet voices. They could sing and their feathers gleamed in the sunshine. But they could not soar in the air. They hesitated at first when bidden to take up the burdens that lay at their feet. But soon they obeyed and taking up the wings in their beaks laid them on their shoulders to carry them. For a little while the load seemed heavy and hard to bear. But presently as they went on carrying the burdens, folding them over their hearts, the wings grew fast to their little bodies and soon they discovered how to use them and were lifted by them up into the air. The weights became wings. It is a parable. We are the wingless birds, and our duties and tasks are the pinions God has made to lift us up and carry us heavenward. We look at our burdens and heavy loads and shrink from them, but as we lift them and bind them about our hearts, they become wings, and on them we rise and soar towards God. There is no burden which, if we lift it cheerfully and bear it with love in our hearts, will not become a blessing to us. God means our tasks to be our helpers. To refuse to bend our shoulders to receive a load is to decline a new opportunity for growth. And that was written by somebody called J.R. Miller. But that is why I like fables is that they can teach us important lessons even though they're not true. They're like parables. So um, in a few audio stories, so when my children are sick, I let them watch more videos than usual more movies than usual but I don't like them to you know just sit there all day watching movies even though they're sick so sometimes I like to get them something to listen to because they're especially when Esther had high fevers she didn't feel like doing anything and it was very boring for her so I found some audio stories for her to listen to as well so um these three are not for like little kids they're more for older kids but I found a Sugar Creek Gang audio drama which we enjoyed listening to. So if you don't know Sugar Creek Gang, there's a, there's a series of books and they're about a like a Christian gang of boys. Um, and there are movies of them as well, but there is one like an audio drama 
on YouTube that's about an hour long. So we enjoyed listening to that. And then I also found a, a channel and it's of a radio program. I don't know if it's still going now, but I think it's more of an old one. Um, but they have a whole lot of like drama audio stories on YouTube. I've only listened to two of them so far, but I listened to one called Mystery of the Open Window and Where is Uncle Dilbert? And it's called um, Your Story Hour, I think. But I'll link it in the description underneath. So those are just things you can listen to. And it also is um, the Pioneer Bible Club, which was something that was made during lockdown when children and adults couldn't go to church. Um, and it is like a, uh, it's something you watch, but it's like a group of people making a, a little bit like a Sunday school class for children. So they have a Bible lesson, they memorize a verse, they have singing and learn different things about God. And they also learn about people from like church history or Christian history as well. So um, Esther enjoyed watching those a few times. When she was feeling unwell, so that is the Pioneer Bible Club. I will link one of them below as well. There's quite a lot of them. They kind of did it as a series during lockdown. Um, and a song I listened to this week, which I really liked, was called, I think it's called One Good Word. And I will link that one below too. And it's about the power of encouragement. And based on that verse, heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Um, so just a few thoughts from Esther being sick. Um, one is, these are just things I've been thinking of or being reminded of. One is, in everything, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So usually it's life's very busy and I love it when I can just stay at home and I don't have to go anywhere. Like those are my favorite days when I can just be at home. Um, but then I started getting the children sick every day and I got a bit sick of being at home. We had some beautiful sunny days and I was stuck at home and I just wanted to get out and go for a walk or go to the park. Um, but here I was with a child with high fevers and some of the time I did go out when your home was here and then I, I went out for a bit but I started to get sick of being at home and um, but then on the Monday I spent a whole day up in the hospital waiting and that gave me an attitude adjustment I thought I would way rather be at home where there are so many things I can do and the time goes fast because you're busy doing things rather than sitting up in hospital and it just reminded me to always be to be thankful um, yeah, there's, there's nearly always something hard in our lives and we can either focus on that or we can focus on what we have to be thankful for. And it is our choice what we focus on. But if we wait to be happy or thankful, if we wait till we don't have any problems, it's never going to happen because there's nearly always something hard. So we can pray about what is hard and we can be thankful and focus on what we do have to be thankful for. And a Bible verse I've been thinking about is Psalm 119 verse 71. And it's good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Um, and yeah, none of us like having hard things, but they can be really good for us. And, you know, as mums, we don't want our children to have anything hard. And yet, if, if our trials or hard things are blessed by God, then they can be the best things that happen to us. And I found it really hard to see Esther feeling so sick. And yet during that time, I had one of the best talks that I've ever had with her. And it came from her. She just started asking me a whole lot of questions. And it showed to me what she's been thinking about. And um, yeah, for me, that was really encouraging. So really important questions about the things that really do matter. And so, yeah, with our children and for ourselves too, we shouldn't just pray for relief from the hard things, which is what we naturally want to do. And we can pray for as well but we should also pray for God to bless them to us because they are there for a reason to to teach us um, so yeah just in a way I'm glad that this sickness happened because because of the conversation that I had with her that was really important so for us and for our children we should pray that God blesses the hard things and then they are worth it um, Esther had antibiotics, which she really hated, and she was nearly to the end of them and she was starting to feel a bit better, so she really didn't want to finish taking them, but I had to make her take it because otherwise she could have gotten more sick again. But it just reminded me of a quote that I read when Lydia was in hospital, and the, the year that Lydia was in hospital a lot, and it was by John Newton, 
And it says trials are medicines which our gracious and wise physicians prescribes because we need them. And he proportions the frequency and the weight of them to what the case requires. Let us trust his skill and thank him for his prescription. So I think that's a good perspective on our trials. Um, and one more thing, I found it really hard to see Esther. Like for about four days, she just lay on the couch night and day. She hardly moved. She was just feeling so sick because of the high fevers. And and then I took her up to hospital. She was miserable up there because her fever got high again and she's waiting in the waiting room and shivering away. Um, and yeah, I just it hurt, hurt me to see her feeling so sick. And I just thought, well, God often com compares himself to a mother in the Bible. So just like I kind of hurt to see Esther hurting, God must hurt to see us hurting as well. And yet he lets hard things happen to us because he knows it is good for us, but he must also feel our pain as well. And yeah, the, God's not heartless. The Bible says he cares for us. So that's a good thing to remember because sometimes when we're hurting, we can get angry at God or we can feel frustrated because he's not doing what we want him to do. But it's good to remember that he hurts for us just like a mother hurts for her child.